Okay. Well, thank you everybody for having us. We're honored to be with you today. And I'm Suzanne, of course. This is my husband, Karal. And we're joining you from about 45 minutes away from Ananda Village in Northern California. And I want to say that I have been to Australia in 1989. I um, went to Karen and to the Great Barrier Reef, and then to Melbourne, and then to Sydney. And um, at the time that I flew home from Sydney, it was 16 hours. So I do appreciate Nara was sharing at the beginning those 7,000 uh, kilometers between Australia and here. I appreciate the long journey. <laughs> and I was already in Sydney. So if you have to travel from somewhere else in Australia, it's quite a distance. But the wonderful thing about technology and especially that has been developed so much in recent years is that it really narrows the gap. And I don't know about you, but I feel like, you know, we're all together here right now, even though we're physically not present. Whenever we come together in the in satsang, um, whether it's online or in person, we can feel that connection almost right away. And it's such a beautiful thing. And I'm really very happy. Um, I don't know if I'm saying anything too soon, but we just, is it okay to share your news, Kalamali and Nara? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. They just shared that they just signed a lease on a new um, space, group space, not too far from them. And they're getting the ball rolling to start to have in-person events. So that will be huge and such a boon for, for all of you um, when you can make it. So today we thought to share a little bit about how to stay connected even when you're at a distance. And of course, Australia is a very big country and there's a lot of space in between where each of you are. Um, and Coral and I first came as they introduced us, we first visited Ananda Village when 1999 turned into the year 2000 for the new Millennium Retreat. And we lived at that time in Southern California. So it was about a eight hour drive between us and Ananda Village. And at that time, if we can remember that far back, there, there wasn't, we didn't have Zoom or, you know, online meetings. It was dial up and the websites used to have the little numbers, how many visitors you would have, you know, each, each day that would visit. So the technology really wasn't there to be able to stay connected. So we had to figure out ways to do that. And where we lived at that time in Southern California and Santa Barbara, there were no other devotees around us. Um, I mean, I think the, the closest devotee was probably four, 400 miles, 800 kilometers, a little less away. So we had to figure out how to start on the spiritual path and how to um, keep that uh, flame going, even though we were isolated and by ourselves. And it's not always easy to do. So I thought I would start out today by kind of sharing the first part about why. Why is it important to stay connected? And especially now in this day and age with YouTube, with Zoom, with you know, email newsletters, websites, everything, it's, it's actually both easy and challenging to stay connected in a deeper way because it's very easy to say, you know, I had a long day, I'm really tired, you know, I was out late last night, I'll watch a recording, you know, or gosh, that new center, that sounds great, weekend retreat, oof, that's a long flight, or whatever, I, I can just participate, you know, I'll send an email or something like that. And certainly all those reasons are very valid, 
You know, there are times when things come up in our lives and it's unexpected. You know, something happened and we were up until two in the morning or three in the morning. And it's hard, you know, to to get up and and participate live. It's not always easy. Um, and and kind of Coral will talk a little bit more about this, but why is it important essentially to put out the energy to do as much as you can online or even better yet in person? And, you know, truthfully, it is because we're happier when we do it. You know, I mean, even if I'm sure we can all think of a circumstance where something happened, life got in the way, there wasn't a lot of sleep, there wasn't a lot of rest, there wasn't a lot of calm, centered, internal time. And we went to that satsang, we went to that meditation, we went to that yoga class, we did whatever despite that. And afterwards, we felt so much better. You know, we we felt more joyful, uh, more centered, happier. Because when we're around people that share our way of thinking, our way of life, our philosophies, our spiritual path, it it buoys us up. You know, it it draws in that joy. And when we can draw in that joy, we connect a little bit easier to that natural joy that is within us. And then we can connect to that and use that out into the rest of the day. So, and when we are in that flow of feeling a little more joy, feeling calmer, centered, even if we are a little tired, and we are a little fatigued, we are a little bit stressed, those feelings vibrate out from us, even if we're not conscious about it. And so that goes into the people that are around us. It goes into our family. If we have children, the children feel that joy. They, they see that, they know that. It goes into our loved ones, our coworkers, the people we pass in the street. And even by doing that, those feelings help in the world as well. You know, our world is going through a lot of stuff right now. There's a lot going on. And sometimes we can feel a little helpless in that situation. What can I do to help this? Honestly, what you can do to help it is stay connected to your spiritual path, be able to have that peace and have that joy and have that harmony. And from each one of us that spreads out into the world. So I mean, the spiritual path is meant to be fun. One time when Swami Kriyananda was asked, you know, what is the purpose of Ananda? He said to have fun. <laughs> so sometimes I think in our culture, we can be raised or we can be taught or it's a subconscious thing that the spiritual path needs to be um, grinding. You know, it needs to, like, you have to work hard, you know, it's like going to the gym, pumping weights, you know, like, you got to work it. But, you know, masters encouraged, and of course, you know, in meditation, if you want a really deep meditation, you need to relax, you know, you need to relax deeply um, and dynamically. And in that relaxation, that's when energy flows and that's when we can find the joy. So, you know, I think really one reason to stay connected is just to help ourselves and to be happier 
and then to help that happiness will naturally help the people around us. And then of course, in all of that, when we are in that flow, we have more energy. And when we have more energy, we can put out more energy. And we all know from being on the, the path for a while, as I understand you're all uh, disciples, many of you Kriyavans, it, it takes some effort, you know, it takes some effort. And if we stay connected as best as we can to our source of inspiration and to those around us, it helps with that effort. We don't have to try quite so hard. We don't have to put out quite so much energy because we're constantly touching in. It's like taking a plot. It's like taking a cord of a lamp and you want to plug it in an outlet. You know, if you keep plugging in that cord, the light is shining. The energy flows from into it. So if you keep constantly plugging in, you receive that energy. And so the energy that you put out, you get back a lot more when you keep that connection going. And then, you know, the other, I think, important thing about why to stay connected is that um, when we are able to stay connected, when we are putting out energy to stay connected and doing it dynamically, we also get bigger. You know, our, our aura grows, our energy increases our happiness that have that peace that joy that calmness that centeredness it really increases and so we become bigger and then when life's issues start to hit which they do you know it's like you're surrounded by beautiful ocean in Australia so you're all familiar with those ocean waves and sometimes they're calm and soft, and the surfers aren't happy. But, but the children, the mothers and the children are. <laughs> and then sometimes those waves get pretty big. And then sometimes they're storming. And just like being at the ocean, being at the beach, when those, when you have a little person, you know, when you have a child at the beach and those waves are coming in, the child is more likely to get hit and to fall over by, by that wave that comes in. But the bigger you are, you know, the adults can, can get that same wave hit into them and they stand still. Nothing's happening to them. They're fine. That, that wave's passing through them, you know. So when we keep that connection up and we grow and we get big and life's challenges come and hit us, they don't knock us over so hard. You know, we're able to handle that more. And then also, again, we have the support of our guru bhais, of our fellow disciples, and they're there to help as well. If we're sitting at home, and we're not willing to put out the energy to stay connected, then, you know, you're not drawing on the support of your friends. And you're also not necessarily giving your guru bhais a chance to serve you. You know, we serve a lot, and we also have to receive at the same time. And sometimes that's not particularly easy. And then, you know, the final point before I want to see if anybody has any questions, but we all came on the path, the spiritual path for a reason, something prodded us into the spiritual path. And 99.9999999% of the time, it wasn't something wonderful. <laughs> It was not a happy circumstance usually. Um, you know, it was either a challenging situation 
or it was possibly that we kind of achieved all the goals that we thought we were supposed to achieve, that we were told that were going to bring us happiness. We got, you know, the, the education, the job, the house, the spouse or the partner, but yet something felt empty in there. And we kept looking and looking and looking until we found that thing that brought us joy. And if you're here in person, if you're watching the recording, if you have gone through discipleship and taken Kriya, then you know that this is, this is what's feeding you. So there's a beautiful meal laid out in Australia and they're working constantly on making it a banquet. That's all you can eat 24, seven, 365. So take advantage of that, you know, take advantage of all of that um, opportunity and all of that chance to feed yourself, you know, come in and, and nourish the soul and the mind and the heart and things like that. So Carl's going to go into kind of like how you can stay connected, especially when you're at such a distance sometimes from each other. But I did want to just ask if anybody does have any questions about anything I said, maybe you can type it into the chat and then Kalamali or Nara can let us know if there's anything there. We sure will. <laughs> <laughs> um, just I'll, I give I know some people need a bit of time to type it in. So just while they're doing that, just wanted to thank you for reminding everybody of that. Why, you know, we get started and we have all that momentum. And so you've really shared beautifully how important it is to remind ourselves why we started it in the first place and to keep that up. So just thank you for that. Um, you all have really demonstrated that. So if I do the math, you've be, you've been basically doing that for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Coming up on your anniversary, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be coming yeah. up on that anniversary. So yeah. 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 Um, did you have any questions that we often get around this topic that maybe while they're typing? Um, just another little I got to introduce nearly everyone, um, but we also were joined by two more people, Ashwin, who's um, actually on our board, and he's in India at the moment, so it's like four in the morning for him. He's another mm -hmm. example of jumping on. <laughs> and then Tracy, uh, she's here as well, and she's actually a really good example of that as well, because she's got her grandson with her every Sunday, but he does some drawing while she watches, and he knows all of our Guru bias. He actually knows a lot of us by name now and uh, feels a part of things. So thank you for that. Thank you for modeling that. Yeah. And those are, I mean, those are two great examples. So it's four in the morning for you. You're traveling, you're in a different time zone and you're getting up and you're plugging in, you're participating, you're giving energy and you're receiving energy and you're finding a solution for how to stay connected, how to be live, even though you have responsibilities and especially one with a child. So, you know, that's, those are two perfect examples for this topic. So I thank you both for <laughs> bringing those good examples. Um, one question I had is, you know, we have our dear Seva who was incredibly, perfect example of showing up and mm -hmm. um, we're all very inspired by by that example and perhaps you can share with everyone a bit about how she showed seva as that just being a part of things she wasn't necessarily out in the spotlight speaking everywhere but she was at everything um and maybe you could talk a bit about that also i didn't mention but um suzanne is um with Dombra who our song does know Dombra from when he came yes. with Ashwin. yeah but you both help with the Sevika order which is really about you know what is community and and that commitment to the vibration of this path 
but doing it with others. And, and Seva was such a, a remarkable example of that. So maybe just sharing a bit about that and her why, even as an example. Yeah. Yeah, it was a real honor and a privilege to um, have the opportunity to live, serve, be around Seva because she, for those of you that may not know, Seva um, met Swami Kriyananda, both, you know, basically a few months after Jyotish at the longest. So I think they met him in 1965 or 66. And um, it was really like Swami's right and left hands. And Seva never did have a public role necessarily. It wasn't her karma, it wasn't her dharma, but she was there for those of you that may have not heard the story when Jyotish first came to Swami's apartment in San Francisco, California and knocked on the door. Swami said, um, you know, he and Jyotish said, hello, and, you know, I'd like to, you know, me to talk more to you. And Swami said, I'm working on a project. Would you like to come in and help? And of course, Jyotish jokes and says, I've been working on that project ever since. <laughs> but Seva did the exact same thing. And so Seva was the person who, you know, did all the early mailings, hung the posters, hung the flyers. And she made it a point through she she helped uh, found Ananda Village, Ananda Meditation Retreat was the original property, Ananda Village. She also went out and helped with uh, the urban centers as well. And um, the last one that she helped with was India. So she moved to India when Swami moved to India in 2003. Um, but you'll never see Seva giving a a Sunday service talk or um, an SR, a spiritual renewal week talk or an inner renewal week talk. However, she was at absolutely everything. Um, and she, she made a point. It didn't matter if it was raining, if it was snowing, if it was storming, if whatever. And I think I remember one time this story correctly. And Lisa, if I get it wrong, you can correct me. But it was a spiritual renewal week, I believe, or some, some kind of program. Maybe it was a winter program. But anyways, there was going to be a big, big Indian banquet. And um, somehow way more people showed up than there was food for. And um, the you know, they knew a lot more people were coming, uh, like a hundred more people were coming. This was back in the early days when many people didn't phone ahead or, you know, there was no online registration. This was, you know, if people wrote in and said they were coming, you knew they were coming. And if they didn't, they didn't. So, you know, they realized, oh my gosh, we, we don't have enough food for all of these people on the day of, and we have to go get some. And it was storming and snowing. And all they, all Seva had was a little Volkswagen bug. Um, and, and she just said, don't worry, I'll get the food. You know, I'll go get the extra food. And in this storm, you know, high winds, snow, visibility, like five feet. I think she could see a foot in front of her little bug. Out she goes by herself. And from Ananda Village to where the next biggest grocery store is, is a, you know, 30 minute, very narrow, very winding drive down a steep river canyon and up the other side into the city that's even at a higher elevation so the snow and everything is worse so out she went by herself you know found all the ingredients 
comes back, you know, does it and one of and they cook it, they serve it, nobody knows the wiser, nobody, you know, had any idea she went out and did that. And one of the most famous pictures of Seva is her in her beautiful Indian costume with a huge smile on her face, serving that food from that banquet. And um, the day that she passed, the day that she left, um, she went, you know, and her neighbor always heard her chanting every morning, always meditation, any group meditation, she was there went to sun, you know, went to purification, went to Sunday service, had lunch, went to the shrine of the master's boutique at the Crystal Hermitage, did her volunteer shift, came home and left the body. So she did her name perfectly. Um, she went out with service. So that's our save a girl. Amazing. And just, you know, just as valuable, just as love, just as equal as somebody in the public eye. So. Thank you. Well, if there aren't any questions, Coral, would you like to talk about? Sure. I'll continue with my segment. We we kind of split the, as Suzanne mentioned, we split it into two major categories. She talked about the why, and I'm going to talk about the how. And within the how to stay connected, I also thought about, you know, two aspects. One is how to stay connected with spirit, with the path, versus how to stay connected with the people, like-minded souls so i'm gonna kind of cover it i'm a i'm a bullet <laughs> uh, you know bullet by bullet kind of guy so i always kind of divide and conquer <laughs> so that's why you know i, I divide it up into these sub categories there's probably more subcategories within that <laughs> um, but i spared you guys from the diagrams and <laughs> venn diagrams and the charts and all that. <laughs> he's an engineer <laughs> so anyways um so the you know, I wrote an, a number of bullets and then I realized, oh, wow, and, you know, the most important one that I should have put at the top is um, you know, keeping um, connected with the spirit is having a strong sadhana. And I mean, that just goes without saying to have a robust sadhana morning and evening. And, you know, the regular regularity is even more important than the length of the sadhana, but just keeping that commitment at least twice a day um, and, you know, connecting, even if it's just yourself in your meditation room. Um, and then, of course, you know, whenever you can have group meditations, whether it's online or in person, um, those kind of add another dimension to the whole thing. So that I wanted to start with that. Um, the other one is uh, singing, singing along, um, whether you have a voice or not, good voice or not, singing on under music is a great um, uh, attunement with the guru, with swamis, Ray. Um, when we first moved to Ananda, uh, Gyan Devi, rest in peace, she was in the choir. Um, even to her, you know, very last years, as long as she could, you know, she had some voice, she would sing. Even if she was sitting, she would still be in the choir and singing. Um, the, after, you know, we met her and all that, she said, so when are you joining the choir? And, you know, she would ask this, like, every time we see her. And I'm like, oh, they must need a lot of people in the choir. <laughs> um, but uh, then I realized, little did I know, she was asking that because, you know, that was a great way of attuning yourself. And, and sure enough, that's what I found after I joined the choir. It's it's um it's a great way of uh, being in that vibration again with the other singers uh, you know it's listening to the music is one thing but also at the same time singing it kind of brings whole another dimension and then same thing goes with chanting uh, whether you are playing the harmonium or not even chanting along uh, a recording a great way um, to go into the vibe doing japa throughout the day whenever um, you are doing a task that doesn't require much, uh, you know, uh, 
attention that you can go have something playing in the background uh, you, you can you know uh, chant jai guru om guru i am spirit uh, waiting in the line waiting in traffic there are so many opportunities um, and then uh, introspecting going through the activities um, of your day and then looking at okay which which ones of these that i did today are bringing me closer to god and which one kind of like keeping me where i am or taking me down so being able to look at those um, and then slowly taking away things that are not helping with that goal um, type of entertainment you choose, you know, movies or music that you listen to or social media or news you follow. There are so many areas that, um, you know, it we get kind of hooked onto. It's the media is, you know, made that way. The entertainment is made that way to kind of have us hooked to it. But at the same time, not all of it is uplifting. And um, Suzanne can tell you her, uh, rating system of movies when she was growing up. <laughs> I don't. Do you have the same rating system for movies in Australia as we do in oh. the states? It's pretty close, but there's oh, okay. things that are different. But they'll get it. They're familiar. Okay. They're familiar. Yeah. So I still use this system today, and it works. Way. It works great. <laughs> G is for good. PG is pretty good. PG-13 is half pretty good, and R is rotten. So <laughs> It's my grading system. So that's a pretty good guide to follow, <laughs> and it still works to this day. <laughs> um, and, you know, for a lot of the things that habits we are trying to shake off, it's, it's not so much about, you know, going cold turkey and stopping it, because uh, a lot of times that also creates... Um, the ego starts resisting and then, you know, it creates resentment. So it's the more important thing is to have the dimension, uh, sorry, the, the direction. Um, so ha having the right direction and then, you know, seeing what works, what, you know, makes you happier, what leaves you with joy. Um, and then those things that, are not helping us slowly they they start falling off anyway so it's not uh, it's not good to do it with a grim determination oh i'm not never gonna you know listen to jazz anymore or anything like that you know sure listen to it every once in a while but then oh you know what you know swami's music is actually a lot better <laughs> um uh one of the you know i mean we have great um online uh, presence uh, with Ananda's, you know, all kinds of blogs and videos, and um, we never missed uh, Jyotish and Davy's uh, weekly podcast, uh, Touch of Light. So we listen to that a lot, and um, and I'll get into it, like how to um, participate in these online events with a friend and then making actually getting more out of it i'll touch on that in a little bit um so yeah so maybe i'll move on to that staying connected with like-minded people um so all of these above practices are great doing by yourself but also it's even stronger when you do it with someone else um i mean i'm lucky uh I have my spouse to always, you know, bounce ideas with and listening to something and then coming up with, um, you know, the main points that we drew out of that. So it's a great way of sharing with each other. And it's amazing, you know, most of the time we are like, I bring up a few points and she was like, oh, I haven't thought about that. And she brings up points that she drew out of that talk, out of that blog and Oh, I haven't thought about those. So it 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 really complements, um, you know, what we can we each get different lessons out of those. Um, so I find that also as a great practice as you, as we watch something or listen to something, to take notes and then to share the highlights out of those. You know what really brought us. Um, you know what point made us. You know really think about it and. Uh, inspired to put into practice and that's the other thing we try to do um, 
rather than you know listening to a talk and say oh yeah how inspiring that's great and then move on we also try to do um okay so that's a great point very inspiring how do we put that into practice let's think about how do we put um in uh how do we put that uh engage in our lives with that particular point so that we can really make the most out of it. Um, I listened in some other podcast um, that they mentioned like people during the pandemic, when they couldn't get together, um, you know, sharing a meal, they shared recipes with each other and cooked, you know, at, at two different locations or maybe three different locations and then had shared the same, ate the same meal together over Zoom. Um, so as long as, you know, you have the same recipe and you can still share uh, that way with other people. And of course, you know, you can, uh, Suzanne mentioned putting out the energy. You can always put out the energy to have a meditation buddy um, and, you know, meditate together over Zoom, you know, make a plan and to meet at a certain time and when you have someone else that you know is going to be there, you, you are not going to miss that. And you are also going to uh, tend to stay in that meditation longer when you set a certain time uh, to be in there together. So those are all um, great ways of um, tuning in with each other into the path. Now, another aspect about both of these um, is... You know, these are all great um, things to put into practice, but it's also like, oh, it's, you know, one more thing to add to your life. So how, how, to, how do you really do these with joy without feeling that these are, you know, um, almost like a, maybe it's a burden, like, yeah, I really ought to do this, but, you know, it's, you know, um, I really, I don't know how I'm going to fit it into my schedule. So one of the um, kind of suggestions about how to form new habits is um, combining something that you feel you ought to do with something you already do. For instance, you're already going for a walk in nature, or you're going for a bike ride or um, going for a walk with a you know, like-minded friend. It's, you can always um, turn those into opportunities for practicing, you know, practicing japa, you know, just singing a chant in the background if you are going for a walk all by yourself. So that way, you know, it's not like you are trying to add one more thing that you need to spend time on. It's you are already doing something and you kind of combine those two. Um, in uh, Jyotishan Devi's recent satsang, he actually touched upon some of these and um, he talked about putting the power of mind into use. He said, whenever we try to change a habit, whenever uh, we are trying to either, um, you know, get rid of a bad habit or uh, improve um, or make something a habit, he said, the, the most important step is to have the determination. And he said, that really gets us 80% um, there. And then the rest is... Um, you know, it's a lot easier once you have that determination, it's much easier to put that into practice. And then you know that God is on your side, you do your best, and then um, leave the rest to God. And he also talked about gamifying the system, you know, turning into, into something fun. You don't have to do it in a way um, that is, a, a, as I mentioned, a burden. You can... Um, turn it into a game. Uh, you can reward yourself whenever you achieve. Um, you know, you make a goal, I'm gonna for 30 days, I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna miss it. And then at the end of those 30 days, give yourself a reward. And maybe a massage or a nice uh, dinner outside or something. Um, and uh, so if you, um, he, he mentioned that if you don't miss this for 40 days, then it turns into a habit. Um, Suzanne is showing me the time, so I'm gonna uh, try to wrap up. Um, so yeah, the last thing I wanna say is basically, you know, experiment with different things. It doesn't have to be like how other people have always done it. 
um, just try different things, what works for you, what makes it fun and enjoyable. Because if it's not fun, it's just going to fall off of your life. And um, I, I think um, that's probably the best way to uh, turn turn these uh, the direction into a habit and then um, making it part of your life and then before you know it it's uh, you know it's only better it's it has already improved your life your sadhana your friendships your relationships um, the sky is the limit <laughs> at that point so thank you and I just want to put in a brief plug because I think as Palamali and Nara, you know, build their center, they're going to have, you know, weekend programs. Of course, there's visiting ministers that come. Um, Sagar and Pranaba were there before that. It was uh, Naya Swami Shanti. Those are the times that it's really important to put to make the time and to put out the energy and the expense to come and participate in person. Because online is great and it's certainly a good tool, but nothing, nothing beats coming in person. And again, we know, you know, when we lived in Santa Barbara, I was an intensive care nurse. Um, he was uh, working uh, as an engineer, and it was hard <laughs> to, to find, you know, create the time to spend the money um, to to do the travel to get to Ananda Village. But it was, you know, it's it was a spiritual lifesaver to do that. And then the other thing I did want to just make a point of is there are many ways that we can serve our source of inspiration. Um, so there's many ways that we can serve Ananda Australia, even if we are on our own, you know, far away from anywhere else host an online satsang. You're having trouble meditating Saturday mornings offer to lead one you you know you need a longer meditation in your week offer to lead one you know put put out the energy to to make it your own so thank you so I don't know much if there are any questions well um if people well, are chatting yeah. I, I thought um write it in the chat box there's two uh marketing tools that I I think sum up a little bit of what uh, the, the saying was. One's the Nike, just do it. And uh, just do it just reminds me, you know, how many people either go to sell a car or sell a house and before they sell it, they fix all those little niggling things for the last 10 years that have been niggling at them, you know, whether it's the squeaky door or the, you know, that. and then at the end of it, they're like, oh, that just took me a day. Why did I wait? five years to fix those things. Why didn't I do them at the time? <laughs> and so just doing it is a part of that. It's that not waiting and saying, oh, I'll wait for an invitation or I'll, uh, it's doing it. It's just putting one step in front of the other. And then the next one that leads on to, which is the uh, Red Bull gives me wings, but it's not about Red Bull. It's about Yogananda gives me wings. This path gives me wings. And it's that, and, and I know there's a couple of engineers here, but it's that yeah. friction. You know, when you start moving a heavy box, it's it's an effort. But once it starts flowing, that friction momentum, momentum keeps that going. And um, it's literally just doing it. You know, it's like saying, right, I'm going to put that one foot in front of the other and then that momentum takes over and, that, and eventually you get the wings. So... So one of the things that happened when, when we were in, kind of along the same lines... Uh, when we were in Santa Barbara before we moved on on the village. Well, so we were looking for like-minded souls. We, we thought, okay, what do we do? Well, let's put an ad in the paper. Yogananda devotees, welcome. You know, um, come together. Let's meditate together. I, I can't remember how we worded it at the time, but um, we were probably the world's smallest meditation group. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, maybe just three, four people, but it was so inspiring to have, you know, just a few people come even every once in a while um, and, you know, do yoga poses together, listen to a chant together and then meditate together. It, 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 that sustained us those two years before we moved to Ananda. So uh, to Ananda village. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of like first we were thinking, well, who are we? I mean, we're just gonna start a meditation group. We are we are new. What are you know, what do we have to we just learned Hong Sa? We, yeah, we just learned Hong Sa. So how are you know what are we gonna share with people? But it didn't matter really. It was just the energy that we put out. We got so much out of it ourselves. It was so um inspiring and and people loved it, the the ones that came and uh stayed. And we even turned our house into a small ashram we we had extra rooms we said okay well if you're a devotee and you're looking for a place to stay i mean that wasn't advertised but we mentioned it to people and um, they said oh yeah i'm looking you know um for a place to stay for a while so we just opened the house and we, we would have you know daily meditations in the morning together you know people's schedules were different but we tried to kind of create a mini ashram in, in our little house not that it was super successful or anything, but it, you know, we tried, we experimented, and that I, I think uh, helped us a lot during that time. That's great. Um, I just was remembering the word you used from Jyotish, determination, hmm. and that's what I think I see from all of you that have maintained a very deep and long-standing connection is that determination to do it. Mm. And, mm -hmm. you know, that is such an important part of all of us waking up every day and centering our life around this path. And, and so maybe if either of you just want to, I know we're running out of a bit of time, but just if either of you have any last bits to share about that determination to be a part of this in the ways that, you know, you've talked about today. Well, I think, you know, as Coral mentioned, and as I mentioned, you do, you know, you do have to get, you do have to put the energy out. It's not easy living at a distance, even though we're only 45 minute drive from Ananda village, you know, it does require extra energy to go up there. However, um, when we when we do we get so much more out of it and of course energy begets energy so the more energy you put out the more energy you receive and that energy is what is really another synonym for determination and you know our hearts long for God's bliss, God's peace, joy, love. We long to be with other people where we can feel like we can be ourselves and we can be relaxed. And so it, it pays off. And one of the cautions that I would give is when that little voice in the back of your head says, there's a thunderstorm out right now. You know, it's, 40 degrees, it's dark, you know, the sun hasn't come up or, oh, you were, you know, up until 11 o'clock at night. Are you sure you really want to get up at four, you know, to drive up, to go to the meditation? You Basically, as Sister Gyanamata said, Yogananda's foremost woman disciple, say yes and make it snappy. You know, you just kind of need to do it. And when once you develop that habit, you just won't want to do anything else. And be careful of that. Deva Leela, in charge of the Kriya Ministry, gave a beautiful talk um, recently at Spiritual Renewal Week about what we lovingly call the velvet rut. <laughs> So it's nice and comfy to do it exactly the way that we've been doing it. And we feel like it's comfortable and we're coasting. Well, when we're comfortable and we're coasting, a lot of times it's a beautiful velvet rut with a slight downhill. 
So, you know, we really do need to put that energy out and challenge ourselves every now and then. And as Carl said, to balance it with some kind of reward as well so it doesn't become grim or heavy. Thank you. That was amazing. I love, uh, I think Swami said that Ananamoyima offered for him to be with her. And, uh, mm -hmm. and he, he basically said, no, my life is one of savor. You know, that's what, uh, of, of work, Master instilled him that it was one of work. Because he said he could have literally just, she saw work as delusion, but that path was not his and he actually said interesting enough that his greatest work would come when he was 70 <laughs> mm. and I think at the time it was like I, th I think he was not even 50 so you know for people to go well what do you mean he's like I know my greatest work is going to come at 70 and that's amazing you know just to have that knowing that that is where your goal is it's just incredible yeah well, we have an incredible spiritual family, and it's such a joy um, to have Australia as part of our family. And um, I'm just so excited and happy for all of you with your new center and all the momentum that's going towards building the Sangha. And um, you just feel like our brothers and sisters and there's a big cord between California and Australia. We are connected. <laughs> We're feeding that energy back and forth. That big fiber optic cable going under the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so much and Lisa as oh, well for joining you. us on your Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. And good uh, morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh maybe we'll just end and send out ohms together as one family as you shared that was so sweet and we can just visualize all of us in the light <clears throat> together as one light and through ohm this light going out connecting the entire planet so we'll rub our hands together and then we'll chant ohm three times Oh, 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 oh. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank God you all for bless coming. bless you all. And we look forward to seeing you either online or in person soon. God bless you all. Blessings to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.